Hi, class, and welcome to Bio 181 uh, Online. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. Lewis Obermiller. I have a PhD in molecular and cellular biology and biochemistry that I got from Arizona State University in 2000. Um, after I got my PhD, I started to work for the National Cancer Institute and was recruited for the by the Genome Institute of Singapore to work on uh, gene profiling of various breast cancer tumors. Um, I moved back to Phoenix, worked at the Carl T. Hayden VA Medical Center, um, and I was recruited by Maricopa to start a biotech program at Mesa Community College. So I started working there in 2003. Um, I teach Bio 181. I teach uh, genetics, microbiology, and biotechnology. My degree is in all things small, as you can probably tell, so I don't do a lot of anatomy, physiology, ecology, any of that stuff. Uh, I'm mostly interested in DNA and cells, and I'm mostly interested in human diseases. Um, I study a lot of big diseases like cardiovascular disease and diabetes, uh, as well as cancer, obviously. And then um, I've recently become interested in uh, human uh, childhood orphan diseases, and by that I mean that these are diseases that are super rare in families, like Snyder Robinson. You guys can look it up if you want. Um, maybe 10 to 20 families have this, and it's not uh, economically uh, viable for any pharmaceutical company or any research company to take on these diseases. So, um, I like to look at them and see if we can find a cure. As we, as the semester goes on, um, you'll understand more that in biology, uh, the shape of a molecule is the most important thing. Um, if you want to mimic a, a hormone or a pheromone, then you want to make it as close to the shape of naturally occurring hormone or pheromone as possible. Uh, drugs that block pain bind into pain receptors specifically and directly. Um, and so shape is the super most important thing. And, you, and usually in these diseases, uh, some mutation has caused that protein to not fold in its correct shape, kind of like a lock and a key. And so if the key is not doesn't have the right shape, it's not going to open the lock. And so in these cases, usually mutations cause the proteins to change their shape so they can't do their function. And so my goal is to try to change that shape back uh, doing various methods, including something uh, you may have heard of in the news called CRISPR-Cas9, which is a gene editing process. Um, I'm also the advisor to the uh, MCC Pre-Medical Club, uh, which includes uh, dentistry, pharmacy, uh, physician assistant, um, occupational therapy, uh, athletic training, uh, and, and basically advanced degrees, uh, everything except nursing. They have their own club. Um, and we meet on Fridays at noon, uh, first and third Friday at noon, um, if you're interested in attending a meeting. If the meeting is in LS, uh, I believe it's 101. But uh, I'll check on that, and I'll post it. Okay, so let's get into the class. Um, so if you go to mesacc.edu, this is the screen you'll see. And then up here in the upper left is Canvas. Um, you should see a little yellow. I can't see it on my end, but you should see a little yellow circle. And then when I click on it, it'll you will be able to see that too on your end. So I'm going to click on Canvas. It's going to take us to the Canvas page. Um, I'll have to log in, I guess. Um, okay. So these are classes from uh, previous semesters. Um, this is the pre-med club um, canvas page, um, and there's some other stuff. I have some undergraduate research going on or whatever. Um, your class is, <clears throat> this is my genetics class. This is your class. 
that's published. That's not gonna help us. Let's go back to publish classes. This is should not work. Yeah. Okay. So by 181, uh, section 27012. Um, and I haven't published this yet. I wanted to record this video before I publish this. So right here where it says fall 2023 intro video, I'm going to give you this video to watch. Um, and basically it's like if you've ever done an in-person class, um, generally the professor goes over the syllabus and the class expectations. And that's what I'm going to do now. So all the stuff we do in Canvas, um, when you purchase a book, uh, it can come with Mastering Biology. You don't need that. We use Canvas as our resource for all of our ancillaries, which basically is a fancy word for like course uh, study guides and, you know, vocabulary words and things like that. All right. So when you go to the homepage, this is what you'll see. Um, your view is going to be a little different than mine, but it's pretty much the same. Um, you're going to do some submission in Microsoft Word, especially in the chemistry lab. <coughs> and this video here will take you to the explanation of how to do drawings in school. I don't know how Google monetize my stuff, but anyway. So this just shows you how to do draw for the chemistry lab and for other labs. So you can actually draw uh, in in the Word document. You don't have, to, and then you can submit it that way. So you don't have to like print it out, draw it, and uh, and then um, scan it and then resubmit it. Okay, so let's go back to your class. Um, these are my office hours. I'm going to have office hours every day of the week except Monday. Monday is reserved for uh, grants and other things that I'm working on. Um, from 11 to 11.50 a.m. Um, so the my in-person office hours are Tuesday, Thursday uh, from 11 to 11.50. But I'll also go on Google Meet during those office hours. Um, if for whatever reason I forget to do that, just uh, send me an email and remind me. Generally, I'm pretty good about that, but sometimes I forget. Um, you're going to need a periodic table for your exams. This is the periodic table that I want you to use. Um, when you take your exams, they're online, so you have to show all of your papers uh, to the camera. Um, and so I want to see this periodic table that you're using uh, to verify that that's the same one. So make sure you download this and print it. You're going to be using this for all of your exams throughout the semester. <clears throat> this is uh, every student that enrolls at Mesa Community College or any Maricopa Community College has access to Office 365 so that you can download and open and edit Word documents and PowerPoints and all that other stuff uh, that I use during the class. Uh, this is the lectures that you're going to be watching. So <clears throat> you should treat this like a in, uh, regular in-person class. So instead of going into school for lecture, you're going to uh, watch a video uh, of a lecture that I've done and take notes on that. And then once you're done taking notes with that, um, I want you to work on the study guide for that chapter. Um, and then once you've done the study guide for that chapter, uh, I want you to work on crossword puzzles. Uh, which are basically vocab words. So you don't have to do the crossword puzzles, but you need to know the vocabulary. <laughs> and um, once you've done that, you're going to take a quiz. And you can take this quiz three times. There's a qu different quiz for every chapter. Um, but I'll just give you an example of a lecture recording here. So you can open the, the list. Uh, again, this is from fall 2023, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so here's the first lecture, uh, lecture one, uh, chapter one, slides one through 15. And then uh, lecture two is, uh, again, a continuation of chapter one, 16 through 31. And then we finish uh, chapter one in this lecture and then move on to chapter two. And it gives you the slides. So the PowerPoint slides are um, in Canvas as well. 
And so if you clicked on this, I muted it so it wouldn't echo. And you're just going to sit and wa uh, watch the lecture just like you would uh, in class. And we'll talk about properties of life. I mean, obviously, if you're taking biology, you need to know uh, bios is life and ology is to study. So obviously, you need to know what life is. And I think when you do this exercise, you might find that that's not uh, quite as straightforward as you might think. All right. So let's go back to the home. We've covered the lectures. We've covered office hours. Uh, just click on this and it'll take you to the Google Meet link in a new page right here. Um, Talked about the periodic table. <clears throat> we talked about so here's all the individual lecture videos that I broke them out just in case something went wrong with my uh, YouTube uh, grouping. There is tutoring available outside of class um, besides my office hours. So I am the best tutor for this class because I write the tests. So I strongly encourage you to come to office hours uh, either online or in person. But if you can't make it, uh, MCC has a virtual tutoring center. Um, it also has an in-person tutoring center. And I'll get you the hours for that. Um, and then uh, you also have access to something called Brain Fuse, which is um, an outsourced tutoring in... Um, I think you get 20 hours, 10 hours of free tutoring per semester. Um, so it has drop-in tutoring and you have to enter in your MEID and password here. And then it has specific um, courses. So you'll want to do the biology or, or if we're covering some chemistry heavy topic, you might want to do that. All right. So, um, I'm just scrolling down. This is a student Canvas guide. In case uh, you, you're not you're familiar with Canvas, uh, you can go here and, and look at uh, what different questions for Canvas that you might have. These are the PowerPoints for every chapter. Um, so, Canvas is pretty good about um, converting these in the actual uh, HTML screen, but you could download it as well and use Office 365 to open it. I don't know, it's having a problem with this one. <coughs> so anyway. Uh, here's the PowerPoint, and you can follow along uh, with the PowerPoint as you go through the lectures. So anyway, that's the each of the PowerPoints for every chapter. Okay. Um, every chapter has a crossword puzzle, so... I want you to do these for each chapter as well. So, for example, the complete genetic code of an organism, uh, which would be two across, is genome. Um, like I said, I don't expect you to turn these in. I'm not grading them, but you do need to know the vocab. So, I put an answer sheet here. <coughs> Got some sort of cough from my kid's daycare. Anyway. Um, so th this is, you requires a PDF reader. So here's the answers. So two across is genome, like I said.
Okay, so do the do the crossword puzzles. Um, follow along with the PowerPoints. Listen to the lectures. Um, there's the answers, and then every chapter has a study guide. So make sure you do these study guides. For example, let's just skip to chapter two. Study guide. And again, you should be able to uh, download uh, Office 365 for this. Okay. So, a substance cannot be broken down in other substances by a chemical reaction. That's a molecule. Um, substance consisting of two or more elements in a fixed ratio. Uh, that's a compound. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Those are the most common elements found in living systems. And so on. So, these are the kind of things that you can expect to see on the test. Um, so every chapter, I want you to do the study guides. Things that you're not sure about, go back to your lecture notes and then review. And then when we get to the genetics chapter, which is chapter 14, I want you to do the genetics problem sets as well here. All right. So if you guys have any questions, send me an email. Not a big deal. Uh, I will send announcements here. Um, like if I'm sick or... I can't make office hours or something happens, my dog runs away, whatever. Uh, I get my kid gets sick and I have to get, go to daycare and pick him up. Uh, I'll let you know uh, through announcements. <coughs> okay, here's your assignments. This is probably what you're most interested in. So, every, like I said, every chapter has a quiz. There's also a syllabus quiz. Um, just to make sure that you read the syllabus because one of the most important things that I want you to do uh, before tomorrow is read the syllabus, uh, order your textbook, and then you guys are going to need a lab kit, and I'll go over that in the syllabus as well. So you're going to order those uh, things, your books and your lab kit, and then read the syllabus, watch the intro video, which is this video right here, in its entirety. And then uh, you're going to go ahead and start. And you can start watching uh, the lecture one, which uh, covers the first few slides of chapter one. Okay, so once you're done, <coughs> once you're done with the crossword puzzles, you've you've watched the lecture, uh, the whole chapter one lecture. So there's three different uh, videos that cover chapter one. Once you finish all of chapter one, all the slides. Uh, I want you to do the study guide, right? Answer the questions in the study guide, study the study guide, do the crossword puzzles, study the crossword puzzles, memorize the vocabulary if you don't already know it, um, and then you're ready to take the quiz. So you get three attempts at each quiz, right? Um, the first quiz is gonna require you to do a lockdown browser. So if you just go ahead and, on your end, if you click on take quiz, it will take you to respond this and then um, you'll have to load down the lockdown browser. So you need to, this lockdown browser for your exams. Um, and so I want to make sure that it works on your computer. I don't want it to be a surprise that you have one hour before the test is due and you're, you haven't tried out the lockdown browser. It's not compatible with your computer for some reason. So anyway, that's just chapter one quiz. The rest of the quizzes are not locked down. It's just a tester. So let's just do chapter two. <coughs> okay, so chapter two, you just, I'm going to preview this question, but so which, so which of the figure, uh, which of the, Figures above depicts the electron configuration of an element with the chemical properties most similar to helium. Well, okay, well, helium uh, has an atomic uh, number of two and a mass of four. So you're going to learn this uh, in chapter two, how to figure out uh, from the periodic table what the electron configuration of every element is. So because it has uh, two protons that's what gives it a, its atomic number it's going to have two electrons in its outer shell right and so anything with two electrons in its outer shell 
would be most similar to helium. Now, helium has a full outer shell, right? So it's a weird molecule where it, it's uh, the first orbital is can only hold two books, like a bookshelf. Then after that, it's eight. So anything that has two electrons in its outer shell, none of these do. So this one has a full, complete outer shell. So the correct answer would be E. All right, so I'm going to submit this. And I should get one. Yes, I scored a one out of ten. Perfect. Anyway, so you guys can do that three times. Um, the questions are pulled out of a test bank. So it's in your best interest because these are questions that are, you might see on the exam. Um, and so it, even if you got a, a 10 out of 10 on one of the quizzes, it's in your best interest to take all three attempts because you get to see different questions that may be on the exam. And so that'll give you quite the advantage when it comes to taking the test. Um, make sure you do the quizzes because those questions are very similar to the ones that are on the exams. All right, so we'll go back to assignments. So there's all your quizzes. Um, that's just my instructor things. So you're gonna have labs, at-home labs, like I said, you're gonna have to order a kit. Some of the labs require you to have use uh, ordinary household objects like, or items like hydrogen peroxide, modeling clay, Play-Doh, uh, Cheerios. Um, you know, I'm trying to make it as streamlined as possible so it's relatively cheap. You might, you might need some uh, K-Row syrup, eggs, things like that that you'll have to buy from the store. These are common items. The kit contains things that aren't very common like test tubes, beakers, uh, parafilm, uh, and other th supplies that you it would take you a long time to drive around and try to find these things. Um, so I partnered with a, a place that normally does like uh, homeschool kids uh, and adults uh, and ha asked them to build a kit for me. So uh, it's, it's a extremely reasonably priced kit for what it is. Um, and you have to purchase it. There's not a course fee for online uh, classes and then uh, because you're doing all these at-home labs you don't have to buy a lab manual so the cost uh, is already covered by you not having to pay a lab fee and not having to actually buy a lab manual all the labs are here <clears throat> first lab is due January 29th it's the chemistry lab so um, let's go to student view so we can see this so we'll do start assignment um, and so you're going to open this, right? Download the chemistry lab. It's in a, doc, a Word doc. All the labs are in Word docs. And make sure you guys read the labs carefully. A lot of students don't read the labs, so they lose a lot of points. I'm kind of lenient on the labs at the beginning, but I'm going to get more strict as the class goes on. So <coughs> these are functional groups. We're going to cover these functional groups in Chapter 4. Um, but they're given here as well. So you're, so you don't have to watch lecture chapter four. You just have to be able to match the pictures with the molecules, uh, the common ones that we use for nutrients, which if you guys didn't know, uh, amino acids are building blocks of protein. So if you look on your nutritional label, uh, you can use for energy proteins, fats, carbs, and not talked about very often, but alcohols or alcohol sugars. Um, those are the four things that your body can use for energy. So obviously that's what we need to live. And so food is important and you can't just eat tree bark. So we're going to study the, the, the uh, food sources that you need to get make energy so that you can live. So one of those things are proteins and so by to make proteins we join amino acids together every time we build a molecule 
we do uh, something called a dehydration reaction. We have to remove water, right? Like if you're dehydrated, you're out of water um, to build the bond, right? If we want to break it apart, we just do the opposite. So we add water, we can split it up. So let's say you ate, uh, drank a protein shake. Uh, those uh, individual amino acids, unless they're already pre-digested, um, are linked together. And in order for you to digest them, you have to break the bonds. So you have to add water. That's called hydrolysis reaction. If you are working out and you want to build muscle, your muscle is made out of proteins usually uh, for the most part. And so especially actin and myosin. And so you need to build those amino acids up into uh, myosin, actin, other things that may build muscle. And so to do that, you have to do the opposite. You have to remove water. So you have to do a dehydration reaction. And that's the purpose of this lab. So what two functional groups are found on amino acids? Circle these. All right, pretty simple. Okay, what's this? C, O, double O, bond, O, O, H. Where did we see that before? Right here, C, double bond, O, O, H. This R is like an X in, uh, in math. So it's just anything that's connected to it. And then on the other side, we have an N, H, 2. Two H's on an N. All right. So where do we see that? Here, right here. Two H's on it. So amino and carboxyl, which is also known as carboxylic acid. So amino acids actually got their name from this amino group and this carboxyl carboxylic acid group. This is just a hydrogen connected to a carbon, so it's not considered a functional group. This is the uh, basic. Uh, bond <clears throat> all right so it says circle these it's underlined and highlighted that means I want you to circle them and it says label them so I want you to circle this and label it you know this is where you're gonna your drawing is gonna come in handy and label this carboxyl and a label draw circle this and label that amino easy as that all right go on to the next so lipids right fats we use the energy source they're made out of glycerol and three fatty acids. That's why it's called a triglyceride, right? Tri is like a tricycle three. And to build these molecules, what do we have to do? Take out water, right? We want to break them apart. What do we do? We have to add water. So dehydration, hydrolysis reactions. Circle these on the diagram and label them, right? So circle and label all of the functional groups. So look on here. What does it look like? This is an OH group, COH. All right, see if you can find it up here. ROH. So remember, this is an X. It can be a carbon or anything else. That OH is a hydroxyl. So you're going to circle this. Circle each one of these, and it's a hydroxyl. This is a carboxyl. We looked at it with the amino acids. Remember, this is nothing. Carbons bound to hydrogens are just a normal basic bond. All right. So find and label the functional groups, circle them on the diagram, label them. That's what I'm asking you to do. Same thing, so glucose, glucose, that's a disaccharide. We add lots of glucoses together. We call those carbs. Those are, that's exactly what a carbohydrate is. Do the same thing here. Uh, fill out the dietary source. Where would you get protein? Well, beans, meat, uh, cheese, dairy. Where would you get lipids? butter, oil, where would you get carbs? I mean, I'm sure you can think of a hundred of these things. We talked about dehydration. What's a dehydration reaction? We take water out and we build molecules. What happens in hydrolysis? We add water in, we break down molecules. Easy enough, all right? When you're done with all that, we fill it all out. Then you save it and then just upload the file uh, just like you would if you're attaching a, a picture to an email. Easy enough. Okay, so I'm going to leave this and I'm going to leave student view. And that's how you're going to submit all of your labs, right? So make sure that you read ahead. Like this bacteria lab takes a week to prep. So if it's due on February 19th, you have to start that on February 12th. Or you're going to run out of time because it takes a week for the bacteria to grow. Osmosis lab, you have to deshell eggs, so you're going to soak them in vinegar for three days. 
you can't start it on the 26th. You have to start it on the 23rd, right? Um, anyway, I mean, most of these are self-explanatory. This might get a little complicated in population genetics, but like I said, come to my office hours. I'm not like a mean person or whatever. I'm here to help you guys. Um, uh, send me an email, right? Ask questions. You know, if you knew all this stuff, then you wouldn't need this class. All right. Here's all the exams. <coughs> I give you uh, over a weekend to take the exam. So the lectures usually end on a Thursday for my in-person classes. Um, and so I give them the exam on, on Tuesday. You guys have from Thursday until Tuesday to take those exams as well. Um, so uh, it opens on the 15th of February and then it closes on the 19th at midnight. Don't wait until one minute before midnight because that gives you one minute to take the test. You need at least an hour to take each of the tests, right? They're designed to be hour exams. Uh, and then it tells you what chapters they cover. So chapters one through four, five through eight, nine through ten. Uh, this is, uh, I, I've been trying a different, uh, to even out all the chapters so that there's roughly four chapters for each exam. Uh, before I would do a little bit more chapters and so I'm just kind of seeing if that's going to make a difference in students grades if they have less uh, more spread out uh, exams covering the same number of chapters so generally every exam is going to cover four chapters we cover a chapter a week right so um, if next week rolls around and you're not done with chapter one you're behind so make sure you keep up because this class can get out of hand fast <clears throat> all right um so those are the quizzes the labs uh, extra credit is due the day of the exam at midnight so you can get extra credit points uh i don't know if you guys have been on rate my professor or whatever but you should go on there every single person says do the extra credit do the extra credit do the extra credit i'm telling you there's like 70 points worth of extra credit that's half of a full exam right so do the extra credit Blood donation is not blood, right? You can do volunteer work, right? It tells you right here. Um, you get someone else to donate blood for you. Uh, you can hospice volunteer. You can do a, you can do feed my starving children, uh, uh, whatever. So it's not just blood. I probably should change the name of this. I'm gonna do that right now. Blood donation or volunteer. And that's due at the very last day of the semester, which is May 10th. All right. Um, so again, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Some of the labs require you guys to have group discussions. <coughs> and so uh, one of those things is a population genetic survey. So for the population genetics lab, um, you can go ahead and start that if you want. I already, I'm the first one to do it. I have a bent little finger and attached earlobes. So... Uh, this is what my little thing, this is a genetic trait that's passed on. Um, and so you're going to need uh, some data since it's called population genetics. We have to do it on a population and our population is going to be our class. <coughs> All right. I'm not going to click on grades because it's going to show people's names and stuff. And we don't, you don't need to do that. I don't use WebEx. Um, I hate it. Uh there are links to outside sources here, web links, and then links for the videos for the uh, labs. Um, okay, and then there, study made is like a, a note card uh, study. I guess you call it an ancillary material. Um, and then lockdown browsers here. Uh, I wouldn't click on that though. I would just go to the quiz <clears throat> and start the quiz and it'll automatically uh, have you do the lockdown browser. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to go over the syllabus and then we'll wrap this up. So here's the syllabus. Bio 181 online, spring 2024. Uh, make sure you're in this section number. You have to be enrolled in this lab. It's a half section. Uh, office hours in person, Tuesday, Thursday, um, 
and online uh, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, like I said, I'll I'll try to remember to do my in person uh, office hours online as well. Since all I just got to do is click on uh, Google Meets. Um, so this tells you all the materials are online. We just covered that PowerPoints, crosswords, study guides. Um, you need to use the lockdown browser. Um, if you have a Chromebook, you have to have a specially configured by the help desk. Uh, it will work, but I, I don't have the tech. I'm a biology instructor, so I don't have the technology to know how to make lockdown browser work on the Chromebook. So you're needing to call the help desk. Here's their phone number and they should be able to walk you through it. <laughs> all right, all the labs are online. Follow schedule in Canvas. You need the lab kit, right? Here's the link to the lab kit, home science tool. Uh, just make sure you order that. Uh, you need to order that by the end of the week so that you'll have it in time for your first uh, <coughs> lab that you are going to do so January 29th you need to have it in hand by February 9th so that gives you roughly uh, 10 days <clears throat> to get it in uh, shipped make sure when you get the lab kit you open it and, and inventory the contents a lot of times uh, the pair film or smaller material like dialysis tubing uh, is wrapped up in the paper and so a lot of students throw that away so make sure you inventory everything in that kit and then if it's missing you call home science tool and tell them uh, that you need a replacement and they'll send it to you or email me um, we have some dialysis tubing and some other stuff that I can uh, get to you maybe I can have you meet me at school or something <clears throat> or just you know call call them <coughs> that's the easiest way to do that if you are planning on taking 182, I'd buy the full text. You can rent the 12th edition, uh, 11th, 10th. I use the 9th just because it's cheaper. Um, I teach out of the 9th. My PowerPoints are for the 9th. Uh, the only thing different between the 9th and the 12th is the illustrations, right? So they're nicer illustrations. Uh, by law, they have to change 20% of the textbook to call it a new edition. And... Uh, it's almost always just pictures. So if you are okay with older pictures and you want to save yourself $100, get the ninth edition. Um, <coughs> you probably didn't notice this, but whenever you were signing up for this class, it says it uh, recommends one year of high school chemistry or one semester of college level chemistry. Um, that doesn't mean you're not, uh, you can't, do it it just means that you're gonna have to work extra hard it's kind of like if someone already had piano lessons and you had never played the piano <clears throat> and I gave you a month to play Chopin at a recital you could get there but it would take you a lot of extra work as opposed to somebody that already is familiar with the piano um, the lab manual is required uh, but I already gave it to you online so you don't need to you don't need a actual lab manual this semester everything's posted on canvas you will need a high-speed internet all this stuff is online so you'll need to go watch the videos on YouTube and so on and so forth you need a computer with a webcam and a microphone uh, because it, the respondents has to monitor you so if you don't have that then this is probably not the right class for you uh, you cannot use an iPhone or an Android phone it has to be uh, an operating system like a Mac OS X or OS operating system or a Windows operating system. Like I said, uh, it, there's a workaround for Chromebook and you can also use an iPad. Um, there is a special thing that I have to select for iPads. I think I did that, but if I didn't, just let me know um, if you're having a problem using an iPad then I can go in there and fix it. Uh, so the whole class is four exams, 150 points each. That's 60% of your grade or 600 points. The quizzes, there's 15 quizzes that were 10 points each. I drop your lowest five. Remember, you can take those three times. 
So that's 10% of your grade. And then the lab, I mean, seriously, if you do the lab and follow the directions and turn it in, uh, even if it's wrong, I give you a chance to do a corrections on it. So there's really no reason that you shouldn't get a 40% uh, of this class should be a give me. You should get 100% or 100% uh, on that 40% of the class, uh, which means the hardest part of this class are the exams. Um, and I, again, you can look, uh, my exams are relatively hard compared to some 181 teachers, but I promise you, once you get to micro and, and anatomy and physiology and other classes that you're going to end up probably taking, if you're in a majors intro biology class, uh, you're going to thank me uh, for making you study for these tests uh, as opposed to just giving you a, a easy class uh, because they, those classes are not easy and they're not going to mess around with students that don't have the background. Uh, for example, you're going to, in micro, you're going to cover in the first two weeks the entire semester of 181, again, as a review. So if you didn't get it down the first time, uh, you're going to have a hard time in those classes. You're probably not going to pass them. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so <clears throat> that's the whole class. And then you have extra credit points, um, internet quizzes, laboratory attendance. Uh, so... Lab is an important part of this class. Uh, I expect you to turn in all your labs. You're allowed to miss two labs without penalty. Um, if you miss three labs, I'm going to give you a warning. And if you miss four labs, I'm going to drop you uh, without exception. So there are no makeup labs. Um, and it says right here, you will be dropped if you miss more than two labs without exception. Um, I can give you a W all the way to the end of the semester. Yeah, that's different than ASU. ASU has a hard deadline drop date. Um, MCC doesn't. So if you got to the end of the class on May 10th and said, I don't want to take that grade, I can give you a W. Uh, you have a disability, disability resources would contact me. Um, and here's their uh, info if you need to get a hold of them. Uh, academic dishonesty, don't cheat. I've been doing this for a long time. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about class rules or visitation. There's no visitation or class rule issue here since we're online. Veterans tutoring, we talked about that. And then here's the schedule that I'm going to, I'm teaching in person on Tuesday, Thursday this, this semester. And so <coughs> this is the schedule I'm going to be following. So just make sure that you keep up, you fall behind. Um, you're probably going to end up in some serious problems here. Now, I know life happens, and so I've, I've edited the, a lot of the due dates, but um, let's go here. Anyway, so uh, I've edited some of the due dates to give you some flexibility with the quizzes. All right, and that's it. So, um, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, send me an email, come to office hours. Um, and then the most important thing is that you order all of the materials that you need for the class. All right. So, uh, hopefully we'll have a great semester, and I'll talk to you soon.